All right, well, in this video, we're gonna change things up a bit. We're not gonna be talking about animation uh, or MoGraph or anything like that, but instead, we're gonna be talking about Redshift a bit. And specifically, we're gonna be talking about Redshift's post effect settings and, and really camera uh, settings or some settings we have in our Redshift camera tag. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so I do have a simple scene here, just a logo. Uh, there's also a tree back here. We may actually, why don't we just go ahead and bring that in as well. Uh, and let's go ahead and get started by hitting start on our IPR here. Okay. And so we'll see this um, start to render here shortly. Uh, the tree does have quite a few polygons, so it does take uh, a few seconds here to get going. But once it does, it's your typical fast redshift or GPU based uh, render. Um, and great, so this is what we have. Now I already have some settings here on, so let's go ahead and just kind of reset these by deleting the Redshift camera tag and adding it back on. And that's absolutely something we can do here. Uh, so don't feel like if you've accidentally created a regular Cinema 4D camera that you have to start from scratch. You can add a Redshift camera tag um, to an existing camera. Now, a lot of the settings, really just about all of them uh, we're going to be covering here, uh, can be found in the Redshift camera tag. So whether that's bokeh, color management, LUT, so on and so forth. Uh, and honestly, I do prefer to use these settings mainly in my camera, uh, but I think it's a little bit easier to take a look at them in the post effects. So to bring up our post effects, we just click on the gears icon here in our render view. And that will bring up our display tab here. Um, and we need to check on apply to file output and enable post effects. And that first one is something that, you know, you'll hear me say several times or, or refer back to in that a lot of these effects that we can add, we are much better off adding in post. Okay, so whether that's After Effects or a similar or different compositing program, um, that's gonna be uh, the big thing with a lot of these. Okay, so color management, um, take, a, take a look at here in a second. I do wanna point out though that a lot of these effects are global, okay? And that is not necessarily a good thing um, for some of them, especially when it comes to bloom, flare, streak, and bokeh. So with those particular effects, if we're gonna use them, I recommend setting them up, setting them up in the camera tag. Some of the other ones, Maybe not so much, but definitely those last few. Okay, color management being one that I think is perfectly fine if you do need to use this um, in our settings here because it is global. So we are currently set to sRGB for our display mode. And unless we have a good reason uh, to change this to something else, you know, linear, Rec. 709, um, we can just leave this alone. But if you are trying to match some existing footage, um, or have some really crazy compositing going on, we may need to change that. It's perfectly fine if it's global. Same with LUTs. Uh, now, I do like using LUTs if I am gonna use them here, as opposed to in my camera tag, because in the camera tag, you don't have the presets and dropdowns uh, to choose from. And these can give us just a head start on our color correction or grading. Um, some of these look pretty interesting. Uh, you know, oftentimes they, they may do a bit too much. Uh, and as I said, this is one of those things I'm much better off doing in post or, or After Effects or whatever pro, a compositing program uh, you're using. So it's not a bad idea, you know, to kind of experiment and see if there's one you like. You know, we can always find it and use it later. Uh, but I would not recommend um, using this as it's going to bake this LUT into our final rendered image. And so if we ever wanted to make changes or revert back, we're gonna have to come back into Cinema 4D and re-render. And that's a huge problem with a lot of these effects. So LUTs are there. Um, color controls, okay, so exposure, contrast, curves, all here. And you know we can mess around with these as much as we want. Once again though, don't recommend doing this because we can do this the exact same in After Effects or wherever you're compositing something together. Photographic exposure, 
once again, this is probably something I would do in camera because if we have multiple cameras um, in the same project, we may want to make some slight modifications here or there. Um, and if we are familiar with uh, photographic exposure, this can be a nice way to come in and really start to dial in our image, perhaps even give it a little bit more realism um, as well. Uh, once again, though, can do pretty much this exact same thing in After Effects. Really, the one thing that I, do, uh, I don't mind using is this allowed overexposure, as sometimes it's just really hard to dial back those overblown areas, and that can definitely help. So this one, uh, not necessarily in this particular scene, but allowed overexposure, I don't mind using from time to time. Same with Black Crush. Uh, if I have areas that are too dark, um, or I want to make it a bit darker, this can just help me push them there. Okay, turn that off. All right, now these next three, four uh, are ones I would definitely do in camera. Okay, and they work the exact same way. So Bloom is going to give us a little bit of almost like a glow. And this is very synonymous with Octane renders. Uh, so if you've seen a lot of images rendered with Octane, you'll notice a lot of them have kind of a bloom or a glow. And we can do something very similar here in Redshift. So if I start to turn down the threshold, okay, we'll start to see this being added. And really what it's doing is looking for the brightest pixels. And the brightest pixels are the ones it's going to assume are uh, light or emitting light in the case of the material we have. And so it's going to give them a little bit of a glow or balloon to them. So as we turn this threshold lower, we'll get more and more of these pixels or of this glow. So we could dial in maybe something like this. The softness can help as well. Blur it a little bit. All right, as well as the intensity. So I don't mind using Bloom in here, but we could achieve something very similar using a glow on our entire image in After Effects. Okay, so I actually think that doesn't look too bad, uh, but you know, what are you gonna do? Flare, eh, kind of gimmicky um, from what I've seen. Works very similarly, but it's meant to add in some lens flares to where things might be coming in from the camera. Um, and so you can see I am getting a, a lens flare, but uh, it's very hard to control. So it's not something I use very often. All right, streak is similar. Okay, start turning down the threshold a bit. Maybe increase the intensity. And we should start to see some streaks around, once again, the brighter part of my image. So a little bit of a different way of stylizing this. Um, you know, this could be a very interesting way to add these kinds of streaks that we might see on like light fixtures or other super bright areas of an image. Um, but once again, I, I don't necessarily feel like committing to this in my actual render. And so I'm probably better off doing this in After Effects. Um, bokeh, also known as depth of field. Uh, this is a global depth of field. So rather than using it um, in our uh, settings here, I much rather use them in our Redshift camera tab. Okay, so whenever we want separate settings for um, any of this stuff, we are better off doing it in camera. And that's the case with Bokeh. So I can turn this on, override it, enable it. All right, now by default, it's going to try and grab settings from our camera. So it's going to grab the focus distance from our camera. All right. Uh, and for the COC radius, it's actually using the f-stop. Okay. So focus distance from the camera, COC radius is actually the f-stop. Now there's nothing wrong with using those two values, but those are in my Cinema 4D camera um, and, you know, scattered in a couple of different tabs. So instead, I do like to use redshift settings, and I'll show you why. So rather than choose derived from camera, I can choose none. And then I can set the focus distance and COC radius manually. Now, you know, I could just kind of mess around here and figure out where I want the focus to be. But in our render view here, 
we can turn on click to focus mode. So now wherever I click is going to be in focus and it's going to change this focus distance for me. So that's really, really helpful. All right. And another reason to do this in camera as opposed to globally is that we can't animate the properties here. We can here. So I could select the logo, make it what is in focus and then to adjust my coc radius if you just hover over here you will see um, the way to change that it's alt or i suppose option if you're on a mac to adjust the coc radius so a very small coc radius means just about everything will be in focus if i really get crazy with this we'll start to see things in the background that are too far away from the camera either behind it or even in front of it um go out of focus and we could even raise this a bit higher so maybe i go to something like five if i want some shallower depth of field and you know the tree behind us now even the hdri that we're seeing is definitely blurry but if we go a bit earlier here to when the text is animating in you will see it's out of focus as well so we have a very very shallow depth of field depth of field here one of my favorite things to do with depth of field, um, but ultimately when it comes together, everything is in focus. Okay, so that's a quick look at our, you know, post effects or settings in our Redshift camera tag. Keep in mind, depth of field, even bloom, all of those things, there's, uh, they're going to be baked into our um Going to be baked into our beauty pass so we have to be very very careful of that because we may want to make a change to the bloom or um the flare or streak heck maybe even the depth of field and that's going to require us to come back in and render out of um, cinema 4d and redshift again as of right now there is not a way to do a separate aov that just has your bloom or or things like that okay now there's some definitely some workarounds but they are a little bit trickier so just something to keep in mind with depth of field you could always render out a depth pass and then add the depth of field uh, directly in after effects so um, you could always modify it there but that's going to do it for this video uh, hopefully you guys liked it and take care